Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day in the world. Yeah, what up, world? It's your boy Buggy, Buggy Boggums. Um, I feel pretty good today, so I decided I'm just gonna sit down and do this. And uh, this is a test because I've done, I think, four podcasts now. I've done like six, but only four of them are posted because I promised myself that I was only gonna do them when I'm wasted. And uh, I don't want to do that anymore. So I found myself when I got super drunk, I would just not really feel like making music. I would feel like talking. And anybody who's been around Bugs when he's drunk, yeah, I talk a lot, dude. I like diving in people's brains and and figuring shit out. But but yeah, I, I actually realized that I don't know if I can do this, if I can just talk for an hour. So this is a, a test right now. Obviously, I'm stoned, but um, I've been sober for like two and a half, three months now. I stopped drinking and all the all the extra shit because um, I really wanted to get healthy and get in shape. And uh, I realized when I was hungover, all I wanted to do was eat shitty food and not work out because obviously I'm hungover. And since I wasn't working out, might as well just party again. And in that time, obviously, I would make music. I was very productive, but... As far as health and being a better living organism, nah, that wasn't happening at all. And um, actually, the trigger of that was my homie Cash passing away. I was, people don't know this, but I'm just going to run through this real quick. I was super, super hungover. And the day he passed away, he actually called me a few times and sent me some messages, letting me know that he had some music that he wrote for my band that he wanted me to use. And I was too hungover. It was five in the afternoon. I was hugging the toilet all morning. So I just slept and I didn't see his calls. I didn't wake up till like 11 p.m. And when I called him back, I was actually like a half hour too late. So erase the fact of me wanting to be healthy and in shape and have abs. When I woke up and realized that I had inebriated myself to the point where I was of zero use, like couldn't answer the phone, I couldn't have been able to help anybody in that moment because I was falling apart from the inside because I drank myself into an abyss for no reason either. I never drank because I was sad or I just drank because it's fucking fun. And anybody knows I'm a happy ass drunk. So like imagine me happy, normal. I'm way more happy when I'm drunk. But when I realized that I could have potentially answered that phone call, you know, and It's inevitable to think about what could have happened, would have happened if you were around for some certain situations when when it comes to losing a life. But um, if I was sober, I clearly obviously would have answered that phone. We would have talked, you know. So that really, that moment obviously had me like reflect on life in itself, what I was doing. And as a musician, as an artist, you partying is kind of normal. A lot of people think that you need to smoke or you need to drink to get that creative spark. That's not necessarily the case for me. I didn't smoke marijuana to become creative or drink to make songs. I Like I said, I would do that shit because it was fun. Like, I think so much and I'm so fucking ADD as far as energy goes that I need that that marijuana to calm me down a little bit. I need a drink. I needed it. Didn't need a drink. It was just fun. But I needed that just to to level me out a little bit. But not it for the sake of creating. Because it doesn't matter if I'm drunk, stoned, or sober. I'm still going to make five to ten songs a day. You know what I mean? It just comes from a different, different motivation. I guess when you're more fucked up, you just... You just... You're more laid back and don't give a fuck as much as far as lyrics, I guess, go. Or just diving into some shit because you're not so in your head and egotistical about like that's corny but so there might be some benefit to it but as far as the core of me as a musician none of the substances were the reasons for it obviously not saying it didn't influence a lot of the music I make though but like I said drinking and society and all that is just so normalized I was um I'm producing, mix, and master all my music as well. So it's not like I'm just writing a song and going and partying and recording it and then hanging out. Like 
if I want to make a song, I have to literally do everything. I have to frequencies, all that shit. I'm not going to go into that, but like, just imagine like, like a rapper going into a place with just his, his bottle and his bud and he just raps and then hangs out while the producer and engineer make the song sound good. I do all of that. So when I was looking back at being in the studio every single day, having different artists come in and out, and every artist has a different vice. Like you could imagine, this guy smokes a lot, this guy drinks a lot, this guy pops this, this guy does that, you know what I mean? But without even realizing it, from the age 18 up until three months ago, I was drinking like five days a week. And I really, really didn't even notice it until I just thought about it and looked back on it. It's so normalized, like at every football game you get wasted, every holiday you get wasted, birthday, celebration get wasted, all of it, you know? So now add being a musician and your job is to be in a music studio where it's just an cr- open, fun, creative environment. So it's just a normal thing. Before I realized it, I, w- I partied for fucking seven years. When you drink a lot at 18... And 19, you're just a a kid partying. Once you turn 22 and you're still drinking like that, you're an alcoholic now. You know, there's a big difference from that. And I got a DUI at 22. So that showed how how I learned my lessons of as far as drinking. And that's the thing. Like, I knew my limit. I never got too drunk. I never... Obviously, I've been hung over hugging the toilet. But I've never been to a point where it was like a problem where I hurt somebody or something. But the driving drunk was clearly an indication that I was about to hurt somebody. So, And that night, I actually thanked that police officer so much when he pulled me over because as he was pulling me over, I saw, like, I was do- I dozed off. So had I not gotten pulled over at that specific time, there would be no bugs right now. So everything happens for a reason. But obviously, that was a lesson in me drinking when I got my DUI. But not like recently. Not like when I looked at life you know what I mean and and what I was doing and where I'm at in life what I want why what I think I want isn't here and just breaking down that if I had what I want would I still be this in this mental spot as far as happiness goes and it all pretty much literally sounds so dumb it comes back to me being in shape I've always wanted to have washboard abs I've always wanted to be like the fitness guy, you know, but I hate running and sweating. <laughs> and like I said, when you're partying over and over and you're you're too hungover to work out and then you have a show that night or you have a studio session at 12 p.m. and you didn't go to sleep till si- – you know, I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying this is what it is and what it was for me. And up until losing cash, I didn't – I really didn't take a look back on my life like I looked back from him. And I was like, oh, shit, like, I'm just spiraling into, like, now imagine being a musician, you're alone, right? Imagine being the producer on top of it. So, like, I'm alone in the studio mixing other people's music on top of making my music, on top of mixing it all. So, like, I'm alone a lot of the time. And, like I said, I wasn't drinking when I was sad and wouldn't make me feel more alone, but... I just realized, like, oh, shit, like, I'm making music to connect with people, but I'm hiding behind it. That, I actually came to the realization of that about a week and a half ago. Like, all these things about, like, what was fun to me three months ago is no longer enjoyable to me. Like, getting drunk. That was so fun to me. Like, I looked forward to just chugging some alcohol and, lie, you know? But... That's not like <laughs> like attractive at all to me anymore. The only thing that I that makes me feel good is getting up and physically moving around because people say like as a drummer and as a performer that like the one thing that stands out is my energy and I take pride on that. But part of the reason is like that's the only time I'm out other than being on stage or a cipher or a show with my band or something like or rehearsal, like I'm in my room making music. So I have so much bent up, built up energy to just naturally let go. But 
basically what I'm getting at is we all know we're being lied to and blah, blah, blah. But like, I really didn't like, I thought I was woke until I realized the shit that I was eating every day. Like, let me break down my diet for y'all. Wake up, get stoned, make some music, not eat yet, by the way. Probably drink a little later on, not eat, get wasted, make some more music, whatever, smoking all that shit. The only time I would eat was right before I go to sleep, super wasted, probably wah-wah with a bunch of dippy cheese and sweets and just bullshit, you know? Uh... Three weeks ago, I started working out a month ago, stopped drinking two and a half months ago, and started eating really healthy a week ago. But three weeks ago, I switched up the diet, which means I just, I had to wean off. I had to wean off into working out. I had to wean off into eating healthy, you know? So three weeks ago, I just stopped eating fast food, which was fucking hard because every fucking day, if anyone knows me, like I love Taco Bell. I love all that shit. So, like, it was really, really, really hard to just fucking stop that and drinking, you know? And at the same time, like, I'm grieving. Like, I was grieving at this this moment. So, I didn't want to numb myself. I wanted to be able to understand and really try to figure out what the fuck the point is, why I'm here, all this shit. You know what I mean? And I actually, like, I'm in a good mood right now. I didn't mean to come on here and preach, but, like... I guess this is what this is. It's my fucking life. So I'm just telling you guys where I've been with it. Um, But getting healthy physically for me is my first step. Because if I'm physically working out, that's also a form of meditation. Because while I'm working out, all I'm doing is thinking. I don't have the chance to put it down through music or creativity. All I can do is is thinking while I'm working out about the reps or just whatever I'm thinking about. So the physical meditation is also the mental meditation, and that seeps into everything else. So remember what I said about the energy that I have and how I try to dull it down with the weed and the drinking just because I have so much of it? Well, switching the diet up, I smoked the same, but switching the diet up, Gave me the energy as if I wasn't smoking at all. Because A, I wasn't hungover. And B, I'm eating real food now. Green salads. F- actual salmon and shit. Like, I'm not eating bullshit. So, the smoking doesn't dull me down to being so tired and stony anymore. Because I still have that natural... Those natural nutrients in my body now instead of the bullshit. So that is carrying over into everything else that I do, which is clearly like music, work ethic with everything. So anybody who knows me knows that I'm sitting on about 400 fucking songs. And since I started doing this, not only about realizing how I get healthy, I'm like realizing like, oh shit, like no matter how healthy I get, I could fucking die right now. And Earlier I said I make music to connect with people, but I've been hiding hiding behind it. Another reason is a selfish reason. I want to live forever. Everyone wants to be invincible. And music was a way when I was 18. I was like, how can I live forever? Like I was tripping one night and I was trying to figure out a way to be invincible. And this was before I started writing rap and like a week before I actually decided to write my first rap. So I'll, I'll tell you the story of how I became a rapper in a second. But what I'm saying is... The arsenal, the catalog that I'm sitting on right now, I'm literally giving it all out. So say out of the 400 songs, right, say 50 of them are trash. That's what I did. Trashed them. So now there's 350 left. Let's say 100 of that 50 are beats. And 50 of those beats I'm definitely not going to use. So those 50 beats, I'm dropping five a week on my YouTube, just the uh, like the weekend type beat, Post Malone type beat, you know, just because cause, uh, sometimes producers will agree with this. Like sometimes when you produce something, you can't hear m- lyrics over it. It's just a beat because you were in it from the creation. So now what you have left over is like 250, 300 actual songs. So... 
majority of them might just be some random things that you created, but 30, 40% of that is shit that I produced. 40% of, of it is shit that local producers gave me. And like I said, that extra 20% might just be some producers that I met online or something. So imagine having four to 500 songs that you have to go, you, not your producer, your engineer, not someone else who has the files, you have it. So like, there's so many benefits to that because like the second I open it, I remember exactly where I was and what I wanted to do with that and where to put it. So I organized all that shit into things like here's the beats, here's the definites, here's the possibles, possibility ones. You know what I mean? Then in the beats, I had to organize which beats of mine do I want to keep? Which ones will I give away? Which ones are absolutely trash? Throw those away. So on top of organizing the 500 into 100, 100, 100, I have to organize the 100, hundreds into the fucking minuscules down to 8 to 12. You know what I mean? So if I have 300 songs that are officially finished, then that means... I have to break them up into projects, but some of them don't fit in projects. Some of them are just them by themselves. And some of them I'm not going to like really majorly push. What I'm saying is Michael Jackson, Prince, Mac Miller, Lil Wayne, Meek Mill, any Led Zeppelin, any musician you could ever possibly think of, you've only heard 25% of their music. And that's being very generous. Like literally you've only, whether it's, Clearing samples, whether it's the labels controlling it, whether it's the musician's ego, not a cocky ego in the sense of they're scared to release it, all that. Think about that. How much art has not been released just because of that. So when I was thinking about life and reflecting on being healthy and all this and all this music, I was like, nobody releases all their shit. Like, I'm in a position where I actually can. And it's every genre. So... I don't want to get pu- caught up in the Spotify playlist paying for plays and shit games. So like I've only wanted to do the art and I've really been contemplating how to do this shit the past six months, year to my life actually of all this stuff that I've been thinking on. And it just boiled down to that. Just fucking do it. It just boiled down to that. Just start working out. Just stop drinking. Just start moving. Just stop thinking about this music. Just start organizing it. Once it's organized, then you can organize the organized. And then it sifts down into like, holy shit, this is fucking a very strong project. So is this one. So is this one. So I just tried to break down for y'all. Like I have a lot of fucking music coming and my quote unquote throwaways are what I'm dropping every week. So every week I'm going to release five beats and one song. Every month I'm going to release an official project, whether it's an EP, an album, or an official single. So if I'm releasing one song a week, that first first week of the new month, I'm still releasing an official project on top of that song. So my YouTube every month, as far as videos being uploaded go, beats alone, 20 beats, that's 20 videos. Songs, four, with a project, that's either one or if it's, an, or if it's a single... That's 30 fucking videos. That's that's crazy. Like, that's not even counting the ciphers and my music videos that I'm going to be doing as well. So I kind of wanted to fill you all in on where I was mentally, where I've been, where I'm headed, what like what my plan is, because a lot of people have been asking, like, what are you doing with all this music? <laughs> because I have so much. And this isn't even counting my band. Like, my band has two unrecorded albums worth of music as well. And they're all fucking hits. So what I was getting at is like Mac Miller, for instance, if you had 50 of his songs to choose from, you know, probably 50 of they're all fucking dope as fuck, but you got to boil it down to 12 to 15 for an album. And say that top 12 that you picked Five of those might not mesh with that album. You know what I mean? As far as a vibe goes or a message or anything. So I'm looking at like the outliers as far as the songs that don't mesh into albums, which actually I don't really count like that because I make every 
genre. So any project, all of this fits on. But there's some music that I hold really close to me right now, and some of it is kind of just like, eh, whatever. Those eh, whatevers, I'm not leaving in my computer is what I'm saying. Like, for instance, the one I released this past week, it's called My Zone. It doesn't matter that I'm only getting like 100 views every time I drop a video on YouTube right now because a couple months ago, no one knows I was getting like five. I have over a thousand subscribers, but YouTube keeps changing and updating. So when I upload a video, it doesn't notify that person that it's new unless they go on my page and click that little bell on. But yeah, the one I released this week called My Zone, that would have never been released as far as the mindset of being in a label or anything else. I'd, me, I would have been like, nah, I don't, I don't want to drop that. Like, yeah, it's cool. But now I'm like, nah, fuck that. I, this was a part in my life, like, even if it was only an hour in the studio where I bopped and danced so hard to that fucking song. So I was like, no, there was a moment with this. There is something about this. I'm going to release it. And it only had 20 fucking views. But within that th- first t- 10 minutes of getting 20 views, I got like four inboxes on my on my fucking YouTube page and comments and shit like from people that I didn't even know were subscribed to my shit saying like, dude, this is fucking fire. Keep dropping shit like this. So that's what I'm getting at. Like you never fucking know because art is fucking art. And that's why it ciphers like I let the quote unquote corny rappers rap because there have been times where like I had an artist send me some shit and I'm like, this person in my head should not be rapping at a cipher, but He wants to do it. I'm going to let him embarrass himself. I'm not going to be the dickhead to say you're not good enough. And then there's a motherfucker who I'm pressing to get there. Like, dude, you need to be in a cypher. You're fire. And it's the complete opposite in person. The person who seemed whack kills shit. And then the person who seems dope is whack. That's the same thing with music as a person. Like, some of the shit that I think is super corny, it's just the saying. One man's trash is another man's treasure. That song, My Zone, is just some goofy freestyle, one-take shit. It's like, if I catch your bitch, something, something in my zone. Like, it's so stupid, but the fucking people who heard it and hit me up said they fucking love it. And that's what I mean. That's why I'm releasing everything. So when I say I have six to eight albums, full albums, four EPs, five to no, like seven collab EPs. When you're talking projects, that's 20 full projects that I have done right now. Think about that. That's so much music. Because each project or EP is going to have eight to 12 to 15 songs. And if the collab EPs are probably four to five. So if I have seven of those, it's 35 songs six full albums of mine that's fucking 30 that's 90 so that we're already over 125 songs and these are fucking hits these are my boiled down ones then i have my solo eps which are about eight songs each and there's four of those so that's 140 songs right there that are guaranteed hits guaranteed because i know what good music is you know what i mean like a lot of us know when something tastes bad and shit like that So now you got to look at the other 150 to 200 that I'm sitting on that I didn't organize yet. I could organize that next 200 into other projects, but a lot of them I think are good enough by themselves. So a lot of those are just going to be singles. So when I say I'm dropping one project a month, I mean one album, one project on top of the four throwaways, quote unquote, on top of the five beats a week. There might be a point where I'm dropping two fucking albums a month. Like, I really want to do this shit different. It's one thing about quality and quantity, but what if the quantity is all quality? (laughs) You know what I mean? So I'm at this spot where shit ain't promised. No one's going to paint this picture how I can. Like, for those who don't know, I'm just going to say it. I have a file on my computer where all my shit is, and it says, if I die, open this. And it's literally a rundown of how I want things released. And I thought about that for a couple weeks. This was a month ago before I really started getting healthy and shit. I was like, no, fuck that. I can't leave. They're not going to do it right. No one's going to want to do it, you know? So I'm just getting all this music out. So you got to think it's going to take me like six months just to release this shit. I'm making the best music of my life right now. The music that I'm going to release after that by summertime is... 
think about the music I'm going to make. And like, I make probably like five to 10 songs a week, sometimes 20. Like sometimes I have a day and I make eight to 10 songs. And that's because I'm by myself. I record myself. I produce myself. I do everything myself. So I'm not like a lot of people. Like I'm not like these other artists. I like have everything. So there's nothing for me to look at really as an example. If I need an example, I have to combine Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters with Eminem with fucking Jam Band. You know, I have to combine people's stories to try and see what mine would be. And I was doing that for so long. But like I said, a month ago, fuck that. No, like I'm different. I have all the shit. I know what I can do. So I'm just I'm just going to start dropping it. And once I get a lot of it out, when I mentioned fucking, I got to stop. I'm see, that's the thing about podcasts too. You start to notice little things you do when you talk. I thought, let's fucking keep doing that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, imagine when an artist has a single, right? And they push it to get on this Spotify playlist and then they push the video and you know, like it goes down that lane of what that is. Now imagine if this artist has a hit in hip hop, rock, EDM, reggae, reggae tone, acoustic, fucking deep house. Like I just named seven. Imagine if one artist has hits in all of them. If that artist dropped those projects within four or five months of each other. Now instead of using this hip hop single and pushing that. I'm going to push all of them at the same fucking time and try to do something really different in the sense of being popping in every fucking genre at the same time. Because if I came with my strictly rap shit, people would put me in that box. If I was just a drummer, people would put me in the rock band box. If I did ciphers or if I did the new wave trap music, people would put me in those, oh, uh, yeah, ooh, boxes, you know? But if I do this all at once... And when the person goes on my YouTube to see another video and it's a completely different genre, I think I'm on to something now. And before I wanted like a team and all this shit to do it with. And when I have like people around me, I realize like I'm pretty much the one doing everything anyway, because I'm such a fucking OCD perfectionist. So when it comes to organizing or shows or vibes or anything, I like find myself like at the forefront of it every time. And it's not like I want to. I just know that shit's not going to be right if I don't. So so that's where I'm like, I'm just going to drop all this shit. I'm just going to do it myself. I'm going to paint this fucking picture. I'm going to get in shape. I could either let this fucking life kill me or I can fucking kill it. And I'm going to kill it. I was sad for too long, years, locked in my own brain, trying to just calculate and figure out how to do this shit and how I could be happy and all this shit. And a lot of my sadness came from not being where I should or want to be. But, like, it's such a weird yin and yang thing because... What these past couple of years taught me was to never get too hot or too cold like like the the two three moments in my life where I was like shit could not get better and like I looked up or whatever I was looking at I was like dude this is fucking like this is it you know like the next day or that night something terrible happens like the the day I got my DUI was the be- one of the best days of my life that's why I got a DUI do you see what I mean? Like <laughs> I celebrated too hard and whatever the case happened. So, and it's not even a physical thing like that. Like I party too hard and got myself a DUI. Sometimes it's metaphysical shit that you realize. Like, I don't know. Shit's weird, dude. Just... Trying, I was trying to figure out like what made me happy, you know, and I thought getting drunk made me happy. Like I said, I thought that a lot of the things I thought made me happy 
were keeping me down. You know what I mean? Worrying about other people, stressing about what other people think, not about you, just period. You know, because like you want to be on the same page with people. You want to build something, you know, you want to build a family. Like my family wasn't a family until they fucked. (laughs) They weren't brother and sister. They weren't already a family and then made a family like they made a family. That's why I'm so big on bringing people together. And like my ciphers and shows, like people will tell you at my shows, they say that like the vibe, the energy is way different. It feels good. It feels like a family. That being said, I realized I was hiding at those events, those events where people are so loving and open and I threw, you know, I find myself hiding behind the fact that I'm running it. So like if someone wants to talk to me for a second, I'll be like, Hey man, how are you doing? Yeah, I got to go make sure they're good. Thank you for coming type shit. You know, that was me, Brandon, running away from real love, a real interaction and using the music as a, as an excuse to hide behind. So instead of me personally talking to all of these people, like I should have at these moments, whether it's just like perfectionism, OCD, I don't know what it is. I use the music, I use the show to run and be by myself. So even at these shows where I'm on stage giving energy, I'm still very in my head and very fucking alone. So it goes back to the first point and why I make music. It's to be with people. I want to be invincible, but the main thing is to connect and be around people and hug each other. You know what I mean? And the very thing that I needed to connect people, I was hiding behind. You know, in a really weird way. It's hard to explain, but I think I kind of explained it right there. But, but yeah, um, I'm not even going to say it because I just told y'all when I do, things go terribly wrong that night or the next day. So I'm working on getting okay. I'm still, still getting there. Trust me, like, I still want to drink every now and then. I still want to eat Taco Bell, you know. I'm not going to lie to y'all, I drank a little bit on like Halloween I had a couple of drinks the other night but nothing that nothing like before because anyone knows me I rage so when you see me with two cups double cup buggy or even a water bottle you could never know if it's water or vodka <laughs> like that's why I always joke what's in the water bottle people fucking know chug vodka all the time but that's the thing like I wasn't just drinking a couple drinks when I drank I was drinking half a handle let that sink in like literally myself like three, four days a week for years, dude. And it wasn't a problem. It wasn't like I was hurting people, making myself look stupid. I w- it wasn't a problem like that. It was a problem to my fucking body, to my brain. But it wasn't a problem like that. So that's why it went so unscathed. But clearly it was a problem if I got a DUI. <laughs> you know, so like we're we're always in these notions of growing and realizing shit about ourselves, but... When you lose people close to you and people that you expected to see at the top with you, whatever the top is, whatever you claim success to be, for people, when I talk about building a team, as far as genuine spirit goes, like the team, quote unquote, that I envisioned seeing myself at the end with, there was only like eight of those people, you know, like 10 maybe. And four of them passed away the past two years. So like I said, my my whole outlook on what I was trying to do just drastically flipped. Nothing that was fun before was fun anymore. I needed to change. I had to change the food I ate, the shit that I watched. For instance, Instagram... I don't want to unfollow people and be corny, but like I can mute your story and shit, but I can't, I cannot do with any of the negative bullshit anymore. For instance, if someone posts something negative about Michael Vick, unfollowed. If someone posts a fucking dog beaten, unfollowed. Anything about Trump, you're unfollowed. Anything about Cardi B or some shit that's in, anything about. Anything that you're repeating that's not you, I'm unfollowing you. I want like I follow people because I want to know what they think. 
what you think. I can't say that if I didn't make music, I wouldn't have this shit because if I didn't make music, I would probably be way worse off. I might be one of those motherfuckers like scrolling and all shit all day. And that's the thing too, like on top of working out, I tried to make that a thing. Stay the fuck off of social media unless I'm posting music. Because when you get into those scroll routines and you start doing the comparing, not even the comparing of seeing successful people, seeing the shitty shit. Like you're just literally opening yourself up to like, Winding yourself up and being angry about things. Like, I find myself doing it from time to time. It's like a tribal Neanderthal thing, like, on Facebook or, like, I'll I'll get in these zones where I'm just scrolling on YouTube and 20, 30 minutes will go by and I j- I've just been watching shit like a fucking zombie. That's, like, one major thing I've been trying to get rid of, too. Like, it's fucking hard, bro. Like, it's hard. That shit is so addicting. For real. It doesn't matter what notifications you get. Like, it, it's fucking addicting. So, like, balancing not doing that as much. It's basically canceling out all the shitty shit and doing the good shit. And now I'm even thinking, like, should I even be eating meat? <laughs> like, where's this fucking meat coming from? Not on some conspiracy shit, theory shit, but, like, for real. Like, I've just been researching the complete opposite of the things I was researching before. And it's it's doing wonders for me right now. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell how clear I am, but if you listen to the other podcasts, like, first couple, like, I'm fucking... If I'm not drunk in the beginning of it, I'm definitely tipsy or wasted by the end of it. And that's only an hour, you know what I mean? But I was talking about where it's slurred and shit like that. But, like, I'm I'm just really not even on some shit, like, breaking things down so crazy like I was before, too. Like, it is what it is now, like... You're going to feel like shit if you just keep doing the same shit. I was doing the same shit and kept feeling like shit. And it that routine happened for years. So the second I cleared my head and I was like, I realized like, oh shit, not, not only is my head clean and I can clean everything, my music, my, my life. And when I really organized my music and saw, I knew I was sitting on 500 songs, but when I really organized it and really saw that I was really fucking sitting on 500 songs, that, like, my motivation changed, you know what I mean? Like, I I was saying the other day, like, two years ago, I had my head on a swivel with my eyes wide open like a baby, just ready to experience the world and shit. Because I had, I just started performing two years ago. So, like, I had done the ciphers and all this shit. I had my buzz, but I nobody knew me as a musician or a performer. They only knew me as, quote-unquote, the cipher guy. So I had to like, the whole point of the ciphers was for me to make music at the same time, but I didn't. I rode the wave because the ciphers popped off so quick and the girl that I loved since seventh grade became my girlfriend. And you know what I mean? Just the fairy tale of what you could imagine happened to me at 19. And that's why I got a DUI. But think about it. Like two years went by for me to realize that I wasted. And that's what I mean. When you're at 19, you're not an alcoholic. You just party a lot, right? But once you turn 21, 22, and you're still doing that, now you're an alcoholic, bud. <laughs> like, now you need to get your shit together. And the DUI was my eye opener for that, and I did. That's what really locked me in my room to start producing, you know? Like, the timeline of how this all played out is very weird, but if I could go back and change anything, it would just to be do what I've been doing in my room while the ciphers happened. Because the musician that I am right now, I could have been four years ago. You know what I mean? But I was at that spot where I thought that it was like I had eyes on me. I thought that I was going to get signed or this or that. And I wouldn't have to engineer and produce. And quickly realize that like if I want to get the sounds that I want out of my voice, then I have to do it. I'm not going to be confident singing in front of people. Like I only started singing recently. And that's because I just let go and started doing it. And I found my pocket for it. But, um, but yeah, man, um, this is crazy that I'm just doing this dead ass sober. Like I'm a little stony. I have the bubbler. I I was going to smoke it before, but I wanted to see if I could get through this shit and, and fill y'all in on some shit. But, um, this is for basically everybody who's been following me. Um, I haven't, I didn't really break down in depth of like 
why I'm a rapper and how it started because I'm sure that's going to happen in later episodes. So I want to save some some stories for those moments. But I just wanted to let you guys know where I'm at, where I'm headed right now. Um, my headspace is the cleanest it's been, honestly, my whole life. Um, I'm ready to take the fucking world over in a good way. This is what I was saying. I had my eyes wide and my head on a swivel in the sense of being excited for things. Now my head is down. I got my blinders on and I'm just focused on what makes me fucking happy. Now what makes me happy is other people being happy. But how the fuck can I make other people happy if I'm not happy, you know? And that stems from me being in shape and being insecure about my body, which stems into the other shit, which is like, you know, for me, it stems from being physical, being a natural human and moving around. Like I said, I hate running, but now I'm fucking sprinting five times a week on top of all the workouts seven days a week. Like I really just went cold turkey and just started doing this shit, eating greens. I got my diet all switched up like two days is chicken, two days is fish, two days is uh, fucking pork chops, two days is that. Every day salad, every day fruit. Like, I really switched that up, working out crazy. That carried over into how much I'm actually organizing and getting this fucking music done. So, like, I'm just in a point where, like, I'm just, I'm creating my legacy. Like I said, I'm not going to let the world kill me. I'm not going to let the why, the question why, murder me anymore. I'm just going to be what I am, flowing through the shit, doing what I know will make me okay. And that's what I'm doing right now. So, yeah, I just wanted to fill you guys in on what's happening. I have a lot of music coming. I'll have fucking my first lineup of Bugs merch coming. So, if you motherfuckers comment in this shit, I'll pick people from the comments and do some special giveaways and shit like that, but... I have my first Bugs merch. The first thing is going to be some hoodies. I have my first hard copies of fucking CDs. Since I have so much music, I think I'm just going to fill the CD up with my favorite songs that I'll that I'll be releasing in the next couple months. So the hard copy of the CDs won't be one specific album. It will be the best of Buggy from 2019, essentially. So I think every year, instead of having hard copy albums because everything's online, I'll have one order of like probably exclusively 300 500 but it'll be the mixture of the the top songs from that year so like 2019 best of buggy type shit you know 2020 something like that but yeah dude i'm super stoked just be on the lookout i'm dropping a couple podcasts a month at least one like i dropped one a week ago but i'm had this so i'll probably do more now that this is the the first sober podcast is done and out the way i'll probably do some fucking more but um yeah but i don't have uh i don't have like an intro theme song i like that little intro i did from the first one during podcasts i'm sure i'll play like snippets i'll do different shit i'll have random guests and friends on this shit so um maybe when it gets to episode 20 is when i'll start doing the film and shit i just gotta get my backdrop and all that shit set up so until then, yeah, it'll just be audio, and um, hopefully this helped you guys dive into my brain some more, and yeah, I'll be back a lot more, man. Y'all are not going to see the end of me. I'm giving y'all the cracks, the cries, the smiles, the smells. I'm giving y'all all of me, you dig? Thank you for your love and support. I hope that you stay on me, stay with me on this ride, you dig? Let's live, dude. I love y'all. Good night.